And Chief Meteorologist Justin Stapleton is here now. Justin, we too have seen abnormal temperatures here, but we can't really complain about ours, right? Well, not necessarily. I mean, again, it's been much warmer the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and what we're going into will likely be the warmest weekend of the year for us, and we can't complain about that. But as that fire chief mentioned, uh, abnormally dry conditions down in California. And in addition, what we're watching here is the snowpack numbers. They continue to dwindle, what we call the SWE, or the snow water equivalent. And that's basically take the snow you melt and how much water does that create. Back off to the eastern end of the state towards the Grand, the John Days, and then down into the southeast. They're running at about 25 or less than that for the, what they should have for snowpack equivalent this year. We're at about 78 across the Willamette Basin. It's a number we're going to watch very carefully as we go in towards what is supposedly supposed to be the end of the wet season for us and go in towards the dry season. So if we're already there, well, then that's something that we'll certainly watch. And again, I know the fire crews across uh, the state of Oregon watching that as well as well as down in California. Now, partly why they're getting such the uh, ferocity of the winds down there is because we've got a huge area of high pressure that's creating a really strong offshore push. You want to know how strong it is? Take a peek. Where's our offshore spot we always watch? Brookings, 92 degrees today on the south coast. As is an indication, we have very strong offshore wind, and that is why we are once again, with the exception of Eugene that sat in the mid-70s, fairly comfortable today. Everybody else pretty far out ahead of that. Now, it was a little cooler. We had a little bit of a reversal of the winds towards Newport. They were at 59. Otherwise, everybody else still well into the 60s today. 75 in Eugene officially, 41 for the overnight low. So that's right about where we should be, but almost 11 degrees above average for where we should be this time of year as well. Now, what we're watching as we head in towards the next couple of days is some energy from this area of low pressure. This is a little disturbance. Remember that it just kind of drifted through the state yesterday? Well, that's going to start moving back south and westward and eventually kind of cut off the jet stream and create what's called an upper level low. I'll show you that in a second. But for tonight, though, and for most of tomorrow, we're going to continue to stay under high pressure, meaning that we'll get a good, pretty north northeasterly wind, very mild start to our late night tonight as temperatures are still in the 60s and 50s. 50s and even 50s and 40s as you get out into the mountains in Central Oregon. And overnight, we'll likely only fall down into the upper 40s, Roseburg, Coos Bay, and low 40s, Corvallis, and in towards uh, Eugene and Springfield. All right, so here's what we're talking about. So we've got this huge high pressure ridge that's pretty much keeping all the warm air pulling up from California, sunny skies for us. But we'll eventually start to see this jet stream cut off just a bit and it'll create what's called an upper level low. And as that continues to sit and slowly meander just off of the northern California coast, it's going to send little waves of moisture at us and little bits of energy at us as well. So while tomorrow we're talking 80s and the warmest day on Sunday, I think by late Sunday afternoon and then on Monday, these are going to start creeping into our forecast. Now, most of that will be in southern Oregon and possibly working its way into the Umpqua Basin. But we're going to watch very carefully as well because those cutoff loads can get a little tricky. Computers sometimes have a little trouble with exactly where they set up. Either way, though, we've got a great day in store for not only the coast, but just area-wide tomorrow. Looking good. You see the reversal of the wind starting to move back on shore. Could see an isolated shower, too, with some blow-off of the thunderstorms by Monday night and Tuesday. In the Umpqua, we're looking good tomorrow. We'll see the temperatures there in the low 80s again, mid-80s on Sunday. But then a chance for some boomers to come rolling through, I think, best on Monday. But might see them again. Tuesday afternoon. Cascade sunny and warm, same story. We'll see a few thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. Bend and Redmond, same story there as well. Sunny and breezy the next couple of days. Thunderstorm threats, slight at best, but they will be out there. And then finally in the valley, sunny and breezy, guys. It's going to be a toasty one tomorrow. I can tell you it's toasty out there. Uh, tonight at Hayward Field, and my goodness, English Gardener is fast. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say to that. Uh, but by the time we get into next week, we'll slowly back the temperatures off, get some of that morning cloud coming mm -hmm. back. Get at least a little closer back to normal here. A little closer back to normal, but still very, very dry. And see rain yeah. on that seven day there. I was out at the rivers, and just everybody was getting ready to put their boats in. It looked yeah. awesome. It, it is, but again, like we said, be careful. Exactly. That water yeah, sure. is chilly. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Justin. You bet. Covering